reading from the New King James Version of the Holy Bible, St. John chapter 10. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. <laughs> this was in the discourse to the Pharisees before the crucifixion. We have concerning this door also mentioned in book of Acts chapter 4. When Peter was giving an answer to the Pharisees, Chapter 4, verse 12, saying, Nor is there salvation in any other, he said, in any other name. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Today I come speaking of the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. He spoke of his sheep, saying his sheep hear his voice, and they follow him. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, and the Spirit of the Most High rested upon the apostles, and they began to speak it, in the languages of all the nations, glorifying Lord God Almighty. The people heard the word and they were added unto the believers 30,000 that day. And it was written as such as should be said, kept on being added. I have a question today as a voice uh, crying out in the wilderness. Yeah, I'm in the wilderness of concrete. And um, most of the animals I see are in the form of human beings walking on two feet. But I have a question. Do you know the voice of the Good Shepherd. Do you know the voice uh, of your Savior? Are you redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? Are you uh, numbered among the elect for salvation? Are you numbered among those who are perishing? Uh, uh, have you received the Good Shepherd, the Savior of your soul? Do you know the voice of your Savior in the pardon of your sins. I, I've met a many religious figures who oh, have good religion. They read a holy book and the book says if you believe that this one, the Son of God, came to earth 
born of a virgin. And uh, he laid his life down, was crucified for the sins of the world, and rose again on the third day. You shall be saved. But it wasn't enough that you should have knowledge that there is salvation available, but that if you were to receive the promise, if you would receive the invitation to everlasting life, you also receive your Savior and hear His voice in the comfort of your soul. It's not enough to know that there is a way, but to know the way for yourself. He is the way, the truth, and the life. In the beginning, before the world was made, He is, as He was, and forever shall be, the light of the world. He gave His word. They come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I shall give you rest. And do you know the voice of your Savior in the pardon of your sins? Or are you numbered among the elect? I come speaking of the kingdom that endures forever. Yeshua, Hamashiach. The Messiah has come. He paid a price for the salvation of whosoever believe on him. He said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. You might have a copy of the good book. You might spend time reading it. And I hope you do. I, I, you might have good religion and, and are faithful to it, and I hope you are. But do you know the voice of your Savior? He came to the prophet Isaiah and said, Tell the nation, that means you as well as me. That means of every generation, of every nation, to know that there is one Savior. There is only one Creator. He is God Almighty, and there is none other beside Him. He is the only one that can save you from your sins. What I'm talking about, I'm talking about the ruler of the universe. It is a kingdom of righteousness. And he gave his law to be written that all men should know. He does not tolerate perversion. He does not tolerate wickedness. He does not tolerate evil thinking or evil doing. But if you were to repent of your wicked ways, cease to do evil and learn to do good, he said, come and let us reason together. Though your sins are scarlet, they shall be white as snow. If you believe in the name of your Savior, the Son of God, that he went to the cross and took your death penalty as well as mine. He is called the Savior of the world, for there is none other. He laid his life down and picked it up because he came to earth like a mortal man. But he was not a mortal man. He wasn't merely a prophet, a mouthpiece like me. No, the immortal, invincible word of God came to earth wrapped in flesh and dwelt among us. He lived and he taught and he showed mercy all the day long. And then he laid his life down in your place and mine. He picked it up on the third day, having paid the price in full. He rose again, and before five eyes, 
500 eyewitnesses slowly uh, ascended back to heaven. My eyes have seen the King. I know he lives. My ears have heard the voice of my Maker. I know he is. I ask you again, have you heard the voice of your Savior? You might call yourself a preacher, might bend the school of theology. You might wear robes of all kinds of colors and be praised of men, but you know your Savior in the pardon of his sin. I mean, do you know his voice and the counsel of his love? His loving kindness and His righteousness. Do you know that you know that you know you're in the family that endures forever? I'm talking about this one, Yeshua. They changed His name, but He didn't stop saving. We call Him Jesus, and He still heals. He still saves. He still draws nigh to the broken hearted. His name, Yeshua, means salvation, for he is the salvation of whosoever would seek him, for whoever seeks him finds him. Oh, I could go on and on uh, about the history of mankind, but there's one thing that you need to know. This world passes away and does to dust, ashes to ashes. Every body born into this material plane got to return to dust, but the soul is eternal. And the question remains, what have you done with the Son of God when the Creator of the universe calls you before the throne of judgment and the book is open of all your deeds? You won't be able to speak any justification on it. It's your name written in the Lamb's book of life. Have you received the word of God? Have you received your Savior? Have you been numbered among the elect? We find ourselves in a world full of trouble all kind of religious ideologies and some using religion to justify murder, to justify conquering lands and poverty. Yet when the creator of the universe came down to the earth, he walked among us as a guest. He walked among us not buying land, not gathering gold, not gathering up the riches of this world, but imparting to mankind true riches. The offer remains the same. The call is the same. Prepare for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You might have a religion based upon what you interpret of the scriptures, but you know the author and the finisher of your faith for yourself. You see, it's not about what you can do for yourself, but what has the Lord done for you. When Father King of the universe, our Heavenly Father came to me and asked me when I was 19 years of age, said, you know my son and what he has done for you. I, I didn't know it, but to understand that the Savior of the world went to a cross and allowed his blood to be shed for the remission of sins, even for me. There's no greater gift, no more can I ask, but the pardon of my sins. Do you know the voice of your Savior? 
in the pardon of your sins. Have you heard him say to your soul, Lord, I'm with you even into the end. This world passes away, but the kingdom of righteousness has no end. Kingdoms have risen in the land, and, and most of them don't last but a few hundred years, and they fall. But there is a kingdom that's not built with stones shaped by the hands of men. It, it's not structured. on moving landmass. I'm talking about it hereafter. There is a point to every soul, every force into this world. Death and then judgment. What have you done with the Son of God? He came to Abram and testified that he had chosen. We read in the 18th chapter of Genesis, he chose Abram that he should teach his children to teach the nation the ways of righteousness, the way of life. How have you received the counsel of the Most High? Are you numbered among the elect? Chosen for everlasting life. Are some chosen and some not chosen? The Lord God Almighty knows His own. But the word is for whosoever Whosoever would to believe on the Son of God, there have been some that were murderers who repented and turned from their wicked ways. There have been some that were perverse homosexuals and be delivered from perverse spirits. There have been people of every manner of walk that have heard the word, received the promise, and been delivered from the devil. Because it is only the devil who desires to lead any soul to destruction. But the devil has only one power, that is to lie, and appeal to the desires of a soul. When your desire is for good, you shall be justified. If you hunger and seek after righteousness, you shall be justified for the, all the works of the faithful, all the works of the children of wisdom are justified. For they are, hallelujah. But they who wait upon the Lord, they renew the strength. If you would to look around yourself and knowing you heard the voice of your maker in the pardon of your sin, but it seems like the world go in a different direction and doesn't seem to stop. I say this world is coming to an end, but the word of God has no end. If you know the voice of your Savior in the pardon of your sins and are numbered among the elect to be faithful to the end, your love is not for this world, but for he who made the world. 
and as this world passes away, so begins the kingdom that has no end. There is a resurrection of the just, but there is no rest for the wicked. Do you know the voice of the Savior in the pardon of your sins? He said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. You don't have to go to uh, another human being, but straight to your Father in heaven in the name of the Son. And he will give you light. He will give you truth. He will give you the way to everlasting life. If you would believe on the goodness of the Lord, that he is a reward of those whose trust is in him, you will be justified, for he never fails. If you trust in the bank, you might be ashamed. If you trust in your neighbor, you might be ashamed. If you trust in yourself, you might be ashamed. But if you put your trust in your Father in heaven, who created all things with his word, you'll never be ashamed. 